Hey, so you started keto and now you're fatigued and you want to throw in the towel because it's been maybe a couple of weeks, maybe even a couple of months and you're just not getting your energy back and you're just, I am so exhausted. I'm going to give you some reasons to why this could be happening. I'm going to break them down sort of into time frame. Like, okay, if you just started, it's probably this. If you're six weeks in, it's probably this. If you're a couple months in and you're still fatigued, it's probably this. And I'll give you some solutions and I'll also give you some peace of mind because I don't want you to quit because there is an explanation to it. All right? So we're going to break it all down. I want to make sure that you hit that red subscribe button because we have new videos almost every single day, but the big one's coming out on Tuesday, Fridays, and Sundays at 7.30 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, go ahead and hit that little bell icon. That way you can turn on notifications and know whenever I go live. And before I start this video, I want to make sure that you check out Fat Snacks down below in the description. All right, so Fat Snacks is a keto cookie that's just done it right. And I put them in this video simply because I know a lot of you people are probably starting keto and just need a little little pick-me-up. So I encourage you to check them out. Sort of a fun way to be able to still have cookies on a keto diet and they're awesome and a good sponsor of this channel. So check them out after this video, please. All right, let's break this down. The first reason that you might be exhausted after starting the keto diet is more than likely a mineral issue. Now, before you turn off this video because it's things that you've heard before, let me give you a little bit of a different explanation, okay? You've probably heard of the keto flu. And the keto flu is not a real flu. It's not literally a flu. It's usually a mineral issue. Now, what happens is when we first deprive ourselves of carbohydrates for any period of time, our kidneys expel water. So the kidneys are kind of like, hey, what's going on? Like, there's no carbohydrates coming in. It's a natural response for them to just shuttle water out. But you know what goes along with water? Minerals. Okay, we lose our sodium, we lose our potassium, we lose our magnesium. And this is where issues arise. And let me explain in a little bit more depth. Okay, so sodium, for instance, when we're deprived of sodium or when we start excreting it rapidly, we end up having a massive migration of fluid from outside the cell to the inside of the cell. Now, the brain cells are exceptionally sensitive to this. So that means we have a big influx of water coming to the inside of the cell, and that's making it so that our brain ends up feeling kind of weird. We feel dizzy, we feel fatigued, okay? And those are the kind of things that we feel where we feel like we're just fatigued. We're not physically fatigued, we're actually mentally fatigued and it's messing us up, okay? The other thing that we have to look at is potassium, okay? The potassium issue is more so related with nerves and muscles. So you end up feeling the weakness, you end up feeling sometimes even the cramping, okay? So that's gonna be a potassium issue. Now, lastly, we have the magnesium issue. Now, if you start getting some eye twitching or maybe some weird cramping or some weird twitching in other parts of your body and just general muscle weakness, that is more than likely a magnesium issue. So what I'm saying here is that there's a lot of things you could do. I could tell you to drink a bunch of electrolytes and it might help, but the sad reality is when you first start a keto diet, your body is trying to get back to equilibrium. It's trying to balance. You're excreting a lot of water. It's just trying to find homeostasis, okay? So I just don't want you to quit simply because you feel a little bit of fatigue from this. It's a simple, natural process and it will get better. Now, if you have gone through keto for a couple of weeks and you're still fatigued, it could be the simple carb transition and what it's doing with dopamine in your brain. Okay, hear me out on this. What happens is in the nucleus accumbens portion of the brain, we receive dopamine hits and they give us the satisfaction, a sense of reward, much like you know, a recreational drug would, right? It's called the mesolimbic pathway. So when we consume something that feels good or tastes good, we get a reward in our brain. Now with carbs, that happens a lot and it's been proven in multiple studies that it activates the mesolimbic pathway in the same way that drugs do, but just in a smaller fashion. So what do we do? Okay, well in this particular case, we probably notice that we're moody, we have anxiety, we have these cravings, and of course we have fatigued. And so there are some solutions, I'll explain them in a second, but first a quick study. So the journal Nutrients published a study that found that there was a significant change in cravings and hunger after 12 weeks on a ketogenic diet compared to a high fiber diet, which is also supposed to be a very highly satiating diet. So the point is, is yeah, if you can stick it out for 10, 12 weeks, then you're definitely going to get over the whole uh, dopamine issue. Okay, that's basically how long it takes for the brain to reset from an addiction. Now this is assuming you have a carb addiction. It doesn't necessarily constitute everyone that's fatigued, okay? Let me give you a way that you can start producing ketones faster and hopefully get through this a little bit better. Aerobic exercise instead of high intensity exercise while you are transitioning. I've talked about a couple of different things and don't get me wrong, I love my high intensity interval training, but it comes into play after you're fat adapted. You see, fatty acid oxidation and fatty acid mobilization occurs better at like a 25% to 60% of your maximum heart rate range, which means like easy cardio actually mobilizes fat a lot better. 
more fat that's getting mobilized gets into the liver to get turned into ketones, which will blunt the cravings and make it so that you can get through this carb addiction a little bit better. We want to start producing ketones faster. Okay, now the other thing we have to look at is something known as carnitine palmitoyl transferase, or CPT1. CPT1 is what allows fat to get into the cell. When we start pushing it at a high intensity, CPT1 drops. Okay, again, not a big deal, but when we're first starting keto, it is a big deal because we want more fat mobilized and more fat and ketones into the cell. Okay, so we just want to be careful there. What happens is the fat essentially gets trapped in the capillary beds because all the blood is rushing to the muscle and not going to the fat anymore. So fat's just kind of hanging out like, hey, Where'd all the blood go that's going to mobilize me? I guess I'll just hang out here. Okay, so that's, simply put, all it is. So if you do low intensity work, you're going to create those ketones a little bit faster. Now the other thing we have to look at is, are you inefficient at creating ketones? Okay, this is something that varies widely from person to person, and it's, it's all genetics and age and all these different things and somewhat environmental factors. But inefficiency of creating ketones is a big deal. There's a study that was published in the journal Metabolism, clinical and experimental, and it took a look at the renal excretion of ketones. The main ones it looked at, of course, acetoacetate, beta-hydroxybutyrate. Now, the reason it was measuring this is it wanted to see what happened when individuals were producing a bunch of ketones over a period of time. Now, what they found was that over time, our bodies actually lessened the production of ketones because they got very efficient at it and increased the retention of them. So at the beginning of a study, ketones were excreted heavily through the urine. That's like when you use those test strips, when you pee on them to test if you're in ketosis, you see a ton at the beginning and then it falls off. Okay, it's simply because you have a big influx of them, your body's not efficient, so it's probably making too many and your body's cells aren't using them, so it's excreting them. Then as you get more efficient, your body holds on to them and doesn't excrete them through the urine. It's like, wait a minute, these are good things. We can recycle them. It's kind of like hidden treasure. It's like you were cleaning out your garage and all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, these are dollar bills. I can do something with these. Okay, so your body does the same thing. It's like, wait, these are precious ketones. Don't get rid of them. Go ahead and recycle them. Spare the energy from the liver, creating new ones, and go ahead and use these ones that haven't been burned up yet. It's efficiency. If your body's having to spend a lot of time creating ketones all the time and you're not adapted and adjusted, it could make you fatigue and it's diverting blood flow. So that efficiency is a big thing. And again, that varies from person to person. It could be a month, could be three months. The point is, is we have this big window in which you could be fatigued and you have to stick it out. I'm here to motivate you on this case. All right, then we have fat adaptation, which is how the cells actually learn to use fat and ketones. In the beginning, the cells are kind of like, whoa, this is a new food coming in here. Like, what's going on? We don't exactly know what's going on, but we'll trust you and we'll use it. Well, as you start getting more adapted, the cells are like, hey, I kind of like this guy. I can use him and start using him for energy. This is great. Now, it comes down to the mitochondria and its ability to utilize those fats, okay, the mitochondrial density. So we look at something known as mitochondrial biogenesis, which is a complicated way of simply saying that it's how long it takes for the mitochondria to die and then new mitochondria to form that are adapted. So it's a thing called a half-life. So the mitochondria has about a one to two week half-life, which means when it dies, it takes about a week or two for a new one to be created. Now, it usually takes about five cycles of half-lives before we've reached equilibrium. So a half-life cuts basically it in half, and then in half again, in half again, in half again, until we have a brand new mitochondria, essentially five half-lives later. So anywhere from five to 10 weeks does it take for the mitochondria to truly become fat adapted. Okay, so my point here is it could take 10, 12 weeks for you to get fat adapted. If you're still fatigued after 12 weeks, I feel like you might need to reevaluate what you are actually eating. And it's probably too much for this video, but you may want to look at increasing protein or increasing fats, one or the other, not both at the same time, so that your ratios are different and see if that improves. Okay, so mineral imbalances, carb addiction slash transition withdrawal, aerobic exercise to help that, inefficiency of creating ketones, and then true fat adaptation and your body actually utilizing those fats. So I hope that this video gave you a really good breakdown. I hope it gave you what you needed to have success with this and not throw in the towel. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you in the next video.